Please welcome Chandra Wilson. <laughs> Hello, darling. I'm a big fan of yours, bro. Hey, mute us while I brought the book. Oh, for real. <laughs> they love you. That's all right. I'm saying that's why I brought the book. It's hard to catch you, Steve Harvey. You like here and there. And so I said, I'm going to have 10 good minutes. I might be able to get an autograph. Y'all think I'll be able to get him a So I'm going to leave it right there. So you can get to it. <laughs> How you been? I'm good. I wow. can't complain about a thing. So we're going to take a walk down memory lane. Uh-oh. All right. OK, this is Throwback Thursday. OK. Bring up the throwback timeline. Oh, my goodness. You want to explain this? Oh, yeah. OK, so all the way there in the center, the little thing there, that was me at six. <laughs> At uh, six. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. So that's uh, Houston, Texas. I did a production of South Pacific at Theater Under the Stars. Um, that was the second like musical I did with them. I've been doing musicals since I was five years old. All right. Let's see the next picture. What I do now? Okay. Yeah. 1982. So, yeah, yeah. Time moved on. I'm still at Theater Under the Stars. Still there, in front. There. Children's training ring, right? Theater Under the Stars uh, of Humphrey School of Musical Theater. And yeah, we did the sequin hats and everything was glitter and jazz hands. Okay, we tracked down some footage. Uh oh. You didn't think we'd just gonna sit up here and just well, do you know, pictures. I was ready for whatever. Okay, all right, well, look here. All right, we got some footage well, we for you. Check this yet. out. Let's go. Let's see what we got. Oh, Lord, help us. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Like yeah. nobody's business. All right. Oh, I need a vacation from all the same old game. Yeah, yeah. If I could only do something different. Oh, Lord, help us. Okay, okay. All right. Well, yeah. I need a yeah. vacation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's when I was flowing with the Gap Band. I had my cap <laughs> going. <laughs> up until about 16 when I finally got some braces, but that was still at the Humphrey School Musical Theater, and that's, you know, where I learned, uh, you know, where I started singing and dancing. That's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, let's see this. You performed through high school into college at right, NYU. Right, right. I got to NYU, and that year, 88, I was doing Pippin. I was playing the leading player. Okay. And actually, while I was doing that Pippin, I got uh, a part on The Cosby Show. So I was still, that was my sophomore year, and I had just started auditioning in New York, and uh, the casting director called me in my dorm. I was with my roommates and told me that, you know, I got this little piece on Cosby, and I just hollered. I hollered so hard on the phone, and she said, please don't ever do that again, please. Yeah. Um, but I was just as green as I could be, and I wanted to take pictures with everybody. So, you know, Malcolm came over, let me take pictures. <laughs> I got my union card out of that one. <laughs> Had to join the union for that. It was good. It was like $700 to join, and the check was like 650 So <laughs> I was in trouble, but I was in the union after that. <laughs> And then you landed a bunch of roles on Broadway. Right, right. I mostly did, you know, New York theater for lots of years. This was um, one show I did with Hilary Swank. I was doing The Miracle Worker. So this is almost two years after 9-11. They mm. still hadn't quite cleared school buses coming through right. the tunnels, and people were still, right. you know, iffy about coming yeah. in to see shows. And, like, at the last minute, we ended up not coming in. And it uh, kind of broke my heart a little yeah. bit. And then you did a pilot that changed the course of your entire career. Right, right. Then that's when the untitled Shonda Rhimes project showed up. <laughs> yeah. I was um, on Broadway at the time. I had just finished stepping into Avenue Q for a minute, and I was like, okay, whatever, audition. It wasn't for me anyway. It was for a short, white, blonde female. But I auditioned anyway, and 11 seasons later. I've become a director since I've been on the show. I've directed 10 episodes of Grey's so far and two more episodes this season. <laughs> um, and then now I have a, a short film um, that's been working its way around the film circuit. It's called mm -hmm. Muted. Um, and it's about a woman who her daughter goes missing. And she has a terrible time trying to get police news stations, anybody, to pay attention to her, to get her daughter's name out there, to get the Amber Alert, anything. It's that journey and the effect that it has on this woman and this family. 
You know, this is where I try to get people to get. When they meet people that have a measure of success. One of the roles that turned it around for you was for a short, white, blonde. But you went anyway. Mm -hmm. See, people, you can't let what somebody else thinks affect your dreams and your visions of yourself. Mm -hmm. And so if you let somebody tell you, this is for this type of person and this person only, and then you walk away, you could be missing out on your opportunity. You got to do what you feel is in your heart to do. They have no idea what your blessing is. Right. I don't have self-esteem issues anymore, because I'm like, I am this. This is me. Yeah. And this is what's going to show yeah. up. I, I got to sign the book now, here. <laughs> After the break, Chandra and I are going to team up in a Throwback Thursday challenge, and if we prevail, the entire studio audience is going home with something really good, <laughs> if we can make that happen.